Welcome to 25 Days of Britmas. Let's get on with the video. Hi guys, welcome back to another day of Britmas and today we are here to talk about Legendborn. So I think I talked about Slay last year by Brittany Morris. Today we are here to talk about another bit of black girl magic and that is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. Uh, this is her debut novel that came out a couple months ago and I have been blessed by this book I will let you guys know right now this will just be me gushing about this book um, if I do decide to talk about some of the things that I would that I would have nitpicked sure but for the most part if you didn't know I loved Legendborn I highly recommend Legendborn I let my friend borrow my other copy of Legendborn so that she could read it so I could have somebody else to talk about it I've begged my book club to go ahead and read Legendborn so we could talk about it and like everybody that I know likes good fantasy books, good black girl books, I've been telling them Legendborn, Legendborn, Legendborn. So if you do not want spoilers or anything like that, I highly recommend you go ahead and save this book, save this, go read the book and come back and let's gush together. So for those who don't know, this story is set in uh, UNC Chapel Hill, is it? Yeah, UNC Chapel Hill. It is about a 16-year-old girl named Bree who gets accepted into the early admissions program and she goes to the college three months after her mother passes away. So there is a lot, a lot of grief about losing her mother and um, that connection and like what she was missing. And this book... I guess we're just going to start right out. So she figures out, she finds out that there's this society of uh, Legendborn who are the descendants of King Arthur and the Round Table. And um, she ends up realizing that her mother is somehow connected to this secret society. So she joins it with Nick, who we'll talk about in a second, um, being Nick Squire. And it's revealed that Nick is actually the descendant of King Arthur himself. And um, he could be summoned by basically like the spirit of King Arthur himself if the world needs him. But they, the, the 13 other members of the round table have to be summoned first before he is. But if he is summoned, then that will basically send us into chaos, essentially. Let... <sighs> That's the premise of the story. I want to talk about Brie specifically. I truly believe Brie was 16. Hands down. Like, I didn't feel like she was stupid as much as I knew she was young and naive. So, it was really easy for me to identify with Brie. I felt like she... She was... She's not like the Deadpool kind of superhero, but she was the kind of superhero, and I quote superhero, who messed up all the time. Like she tried so hard, but she messed up all of the time. And I loved how vulnerable and how broken and how she just trying to figure out life without her mom. And she didn't know what to believe or what to do. And she was just trying she was seeking answers so she could feel better. That was pretty much how Brie operated. And I felt like Brie being this imperfect character was fantastic. I Every time she screwed up though, I was like, girl, sis, get it together. <laughs> get it together. Get it together. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, sis. Okay, okay, okay. All right, you, you doing the most? You doing the most. We gonna calm this down, but you doing the most. And, um, I had this, I had a thing where I was like, okay, she's 16 years old. Okay. So like Nick and Sal and all of them, they were like 17 or 18 or were they in their twenties crushing on this 16 year old girl? That was a question that I had, but back to gushing. Um, everybody thinks Brie is spiraling. Brie, everybody thinks that she's not grieving very well. Um, especially her A1 day one, Alice, who is her roommate and her friend who also got accepted into the program. And even though she flipped the heck out, like she went zero to 100, uh, being like, oh my God, you've changed. And after one night, 
I was like, sis, if you were my best friend, I would have like laid you out for abandoning me after one incident. But like, again, I have to remember they are 16. And so like, I have to remember that some of their reactions, their spur of the moment, full blown freak outs, they're 16. We did a lot of crazy crap when we were 16 and we were also very over dramatic. So once I remember that and put that back into perspective, I understood Brie and Alice a little bit more, but at the same time, like Brie and Alice still really cared about each other and Alice cared enough to tell her dad. And I think that is something that really holds merit because, you know, friendship is something that I, I, I personally really value friendship and I value that connection um, with my girls because I, I have, I have friends, right? But like I have three girlfriends, well, four that like, I feel like if something were to happen, they would tell my parents, they would try to get me help. They would, they wouldn't let me just crumble. And so Alice interjecting herself in there, even though she knew Brie was going to be mad at her. I thought that was so sweet and genuine. And her daddy, oh my gosh, like, him hiring a therapist and specifically looking for a black female therapist wonders. Um, like I said, a lot of the black community still looks at therapy as a taboo topic. So for it to be so normalized in this book and to specifically state like, I looked for a black woman so that you would have be able to relate. Like I, I, I want you to feel comfortable. And then they said that she, you know, she happened to know her mom and that like gave her more motivation to talk. But I wasn't ready for how amazing these therapy sessions were going to be because we got introduced into root magic, which is basically like, you know, we crack jokes and we'd be like, I felt like that came from the blood of my ancestors. Like essentially that's what root magic is. And root magic connects you to your to your heritage and to your past and like gives them the ability to help you. I just thought the whole root magic thing was very beautifully done. Um that plot twist at the end because of root magic. <laughs> like yes. Um I liked the black women thing because I went to a PWI and it was a blessing to have met black women that were also engineer or in the engineering program who like, I'm not saying that I, I had other friends, but there is something special about black women supporting other black women. It's something that I cannot explain. It's just, if you're a black woman, you know what I'm talking about. And so having just those three, those three girls with me through my entire engineering program, I, I think that I, I don't think I would have made it without them. We we shared something and like she got that kind of thing from her therapist and these other women that also practice root magic. But it was also revealed that like, you know, her mother didn't share with her that she also participated in root magic. Her mother was a well-known, really successful botanist because of her root magic. And I really liked the, the idea that root magic was borrowed from the earth and that it was something that we know we can use, but it's not something that we tried to take for our own. Whereas their understanding of the legend born magic is that they stole it. And I just found that very interesting for the plot twist at the end in the way that it was stolen. Like... I just really enjoyed that. Um, also, on like a full geeky nerd out thing, I really enjoyed the King Arthur spin. I was like, dang, yo. Like the whole time I was reading the book, I was like, so he's supposed to be King Arthur. There's another guy who is the descendant of Lancelot. So who's Guinevere and like, because at first I was like, Bree's not, there's no way that Bree could be the Guinevere in this situation because like they tried to try they tried to tell me there there was a love triangle between Cell, her and Nick and I would also like us to stop doing love triangles 
because I didn't feel pulled towards, I didn't feel conflicted about who she should be with. So it didn't feel like a love triangle. Um, but I felt like the two weakest characters in this book were Cell and Nick. They were the flattest characters to me. Um, they, they like, they were like the stereotypes of the book. Like he was the super hot, super popular, super adorable Nick. And then there was his counterpart. He's the person he doesn't get along with the brooding, but sexy guy. I was like, so this is, this is all y'all are worth to me in this story. I don't feel like they added a whole lot until the end when I was like, <laughs> but yeah, I just. They were the flattest two characters for me. I loved Will. Loved him. Loved him, loved him, loved him, loved him. Um, I enjoyed the fact that there wasn't just one person that explained the entire thing about Legendborn. I liked that she communicated with people and that the conversations explaining Legendborn were as if you were having a genuine conversation and genuinely confused. It wasn't just like one chick whose entire purpose in the book was to tell how the story happened and then die. Y'all know there are plenty of books that fit that description. Um, I really liked the, um, I guess I can compare this particular situation to, um, a blade so black where like she was out there doing this stuff and it wasn't, it wasn't unrealistic. Like time still went and she was still missing out on stuff and getting in trouble for not calling her dad and all this stuff because she was doing that. So it was like, there's a secret society and like the secret society continues to live while life itself was going on. And so her trying to just figure it out and like not bomb classes and keep her friend, uh, ha be, be booed up with Nick, all that stuff. Cool. But <laughs> how do I put this? Um, the, the aristocratic is what I'm going to call them. The aristocratic Caucasians in this book, um, the microaggressions were perfect for a lack of a better word. Um, old girl acting like she was the queen of diversity because she had one black girl in the mix. Um, when old girl, when that old lady handed her her jacket and wanted her to put the jacket away and then looked at her like she was crazy. Um, <laughs> the part where Bree showed up to the ball and the guy working the door was like, basically like, get it sis. Like everything was great when she was chosen to be the squire for Nick and she got called all these racist ragamuffin nappy headed, all that stuff. And like, that was perfect because those are the same people that smiled in her face. But until she qualified for something that their children qualified for, all of their racism came out. And that's the kind of stuff that we really experience on a regular basis. It's cute, you know, <laughs> diversity, diversity, diversity. And then when we actually rise to the occasion and take what we deserve, we become all types of things. People want to throw affirmative action in our faces and act like that's the only reason we got what we got. And like that was a real that was real life and I when Brie turned around and act like she was gonna cuss somebody out I felt that I was like yep that's exactly how I would have reacted and so I been talking for almost 15 minutes so I'm just gonna stop here and say um I'm looking forward to the sequel of Legendborn I would love to be on the PR for Legend Born. So if any of you guys are Simon and Schuster, or I guess this would be Har Harper Call or Penguin. Is it Penguin that's buying? Whatever. If any of y'all are on the PR team and y'all have connections to recommend other booktubers, please recommend me. Um, I would really like this opportunity. I love this idea of like I love black girl magic. I love fantasy books, and I love when it's not all like it's not all because she's black but being black is powerful is basically how i translated this book 
And so if you have not read it or thought about reading it, go ahead and read it. I didn't spoil the ending for you guys. I did not give you too, too many details because I still want you to read this book. So if you have read Legendborn, I would love to know what you thought. <laughs> so leave me a comment down below. If you don't agree with me, I would also like to know your comments. Come correct. But I would also like to know your comments. So thank you guys so much for watching. Until tomorrow's Britmas. Bye.